All right, so we're back. Continue my lesson series from what well, I took off last week, kind of. Um, thank you, IT, for filling in. Um, but so, like I said, my lesson series is called Wait, Wait, Wait. And so we're tackling three different um, issues in this uh, lesson series. The first one was about service um, and how we are waiters for God. And tonight we're going to be talking about patience. And so, um, if you've already been listening, the lesson is titled The Process of Patience. And we're kind of just going to go through uh, what the process of patience looks like in our daily lives and uh, how we're supposed to go about that. So to start off, kind of want to just um, go to the first scripture that I have, 2 Peter 3, verse 9. And so I'm going to read verse eight and um, kind of tie it in. And so it says, but you must not forget this one thing, dear friends. A day is like a thousand years to the Lord and a thousand years is like a day. Lord isn't really being slow about his promise as some people think. No, he's being patient for your sake. He does not want anyone to be destroyed, but wants everyone to repent. And so um, just thinking about this verse and thinking about the fruit of the spirit um what do we think about like the word and the concept of patience like is this something that we like to do is this something that uh do we actually see the fruit of it like how do we feel like about the process of actually being patient Manny we can't hear you you're on mute I think as a Christian, it's imperative that you develop patience because if you don't, you're going to have more pain going through it. Uh, some people see patience as a weakness in a way because mm. when you're out here in the world and, and you get somebody in your face and, and all that stuff, it takes strength to restrain yourself from becoming physical. I grew up in New York, so that was our way of dealing it. Whenever somebody get in your face, then you know you're going to fight within seconds. But that was a long time ago. Long, long time ago. Patience is imperative for a Christian. That, that's, that's all I have to say. You have to. But remember, it's a, it's a sign of strength, not weakness. Yeah, I like that you brought up that, um, especially that part, like it's a sign of strength, not weakness, because it's easy to kind of like let the rope go and just retaliate with your feelings and actions all the time. And I even just think about how patience is so like countercultural to the society we live in. Like we think about a lot of the things that we have access to. We don't have to be patient for them, like Wi-Fi. Like you think about Amazon Prime, you think about streaming things on TV, like the pattern of the world isn't patience, it's instant gratification. And so when you think about that and you think about all these things that are kind of readily available to us that we take for granted on a day-to-day -day basis, the process of patience really isn't one of those things that you actually want to do because of the fact of the world we live in teaches the opposite. It's like, no, get what you want now, take it, take it. Oh, it's good for you now. And patience kind of teaches you the opposite where some things are need to be delayed for a certain timing. Or even like this verse says, like the Lord is delaying his promise for our sake because he doesn't want us to be destroyed. And so um, just thinking about that, uh, did anyone else have any more comments about the verse or um, anything before? Uh, I kind of jump. Good side yeah. comment. Um, I was just reminded that um, God is asking us to be patient, um, but He's not asking us to do something that He has not done. Um, yeah, that's fine. Oh, you were going to say something, Ryan? Yeah, I was just going to say um, <clears throat> I feel like they're like different. Uh, I guess different, uh, I guess areas of your life where you like need patience and where, you know, sometimes patience is 
like harder to have. Um, not saying like, you know, you shouldn't have it either way, but like, you know, if, if, if you're like used to something and then it got taken away from you, like having that patience and waiting, um, like waiting for, um, like something better, maybe like, you know, tougher than, you know, waiting for something that you've never like had before or, um, like you never experienced. Um, and which, I mean, I'm, I appreciate the lesson because I'm like going through, honestly going through something right now. Um, and I'm over in the islands for vet school. And I just went through, I just went through something while I'm going through something over here. And like the COVID cases have like been building up over here, which it was COVID free. So now we're like just on lockdown, like just shut away in our apartments and uh, can't really hang out with anyone. So on top of like what I was going through, I had that and uh, just just having that patience and like, cause I'm like, oh man, I'm, I can't wait to go back to the United States. I can't wait to, can't wait to be done with this. <laughs> but um, just recognizing that like, you know, God has a plan and um, you know, just because it's uncomfortable, uncomfortable for me right now, doesn't mean like, you know, his plan isn't, uh, you know, isn't better in the end. And so I, I feel like in other instances I can have, like, it's easier to have patience, but like during, like when there's just like a lot going on, it's just, um, in certain instances, it's just harder to like have that at the forefront of your mind. That's all I have. Oh, no, I appreciate your comment. And I think kind of like the overarching thing you're kind of addressing is, um, like in kind of with patience in general is that patience has a prerequisite of time. <laughs> like there's, the, there has to, time has to lap for patience to be built. Like there's time has to lap, laps for the fruit of the spirit, like for the, the fruit of patience to actually, you know, show its true, you know, form and whatnot. And I think that's the, the, the tough part about patience is that you're just sitting there wondering, you're like, dang, when is this gonna happen? Or dang, when is God gonna deliver? And you start to kind of like lose that, you kind of like lose some hope, you kind of lose some faith, but, um, you know, we should continue having that, letting that patience build us and whatnot. And I even thought about this um, as I was kind of crafting the lesson, like God had patience when he made the whole earth, because we talk about like how, you know, he spoke things into existence in seven days. If God wanted to, he could just spoke everything into existence in one day, but, mm -hmm. you know, he didn't like even going back to verse eight in the like where he says a day is like a thousand years and a thousand years is like a day. So just imagine like if we just equated that into real time, like God created one part of the earth or created this thing for the earth and then waited, quote unquote, a thousand years. And then the next day did something else. And then the next day did something else. And he just like rehearsed that. But if God wanted to, like he was speaking everything. So you see how freely words come out of our mouths easily, like. God could just be like, oh, create everything, and that would have been it. But even then, like, God took his time with creation, and so I think that's even another sign of just the impact of patience that God took his time to make every single thing the way it was. And so I think about that process, and um, I kind of, like, want to get into, like, the three things I um, kind of peeled away from, like, the process of patience. And so um, the first part of this is preparation. So Preparation to me is the first step in patience. And so can someone read 1 Corinthians 9, 24 through 27? First Corinthians 9, what? 24 through 27. I got it. <clears throat> All right, go ahead. Do, you not, do you not know that in a race, all the runners run? but only one gets the prize run in such a way as to get the prize. Everyone who competes in the games does goes into strict training. They do it to get a crown that will, uh, that will not last, but we do it to get a crown that will last forever. Therefore I do not run like someone running aimlessly. I do not fight like a boxer beating the air. No, I strike a blow to my body and make it my slave so that after I have preached to others, I myself will not be disqualified for the prize. Right. And um, this, like, this verse kind of like 
when I was reading it, um, it made me think of the off season. Um, I don't know how many people listen to J. Cole, but I do. So um, like his recent album was about the off season and really he kind of talks about preparation and preparation. And I thought about it in, um, it's like NBA playoffs time. So, you know, it's a good time to watch uh, basketball and whatnot. But um, the thing is like, you always see if you like ever watch a basketball game before, maybe two, three hours, they're showing the players just like warming up or they're just showing them like listening to music. They're showing them doing whatever. Like they know the event of what they're getting ready to do, but they're preparing themselves mentally or physically before the game. And I think about that preparation and even like the strict training that it talks about in this verse about, um, you know, being disciplined. Um, at least in my version, it says all athletes are disciplined in their training. And so I think about that and that type of preparation that we're supposed to be building and whatnot. And um, that helps cultivate that patience. Like we should be, you know, kind of being active while we're being patient. Like God does this cause to be lazy while we're being, while we're waiting on what he wants. And so I'm um, thinking about these concepts so far, uh, what uh, thoughts do we have? Yeah, I think preparation is 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 key. I think of, there's a lot um, I think about, but I think of people who, you know, there's a phrase, something to the extent of sitting there watching the grass grow, like like if you're watching it, it's gonna grow any faster. Um, but a lot of times, our focus is only on that one thing that we are uh, trying to uh, bring to fruition faster that we get so preoccupied with it, uh, we, we lose all sense of everything else. And I think patience is, uh, you know, I, it's already been stressed that it's important, um, but uh, I, I think how we wait is, is, is important, um, so. I'm trying to connect, um a lesson, um, some lesson I'm learning from YouTube. But um, I think that's featured my Jerry's Daniels, what have you. Um, he, was talk, he was talking about how God had provision before Christ. Um, and he, and the, what he said was so poetic, I think, I think. Um, he was saying how, um, God created Adam and Eve to and placed them in the garden. Okay. Um, he said that Jesus prayed in the garden. Okay. Provisioner, God uh, preparing the, 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 I don't know, preparing the salvation. Um, he already had in mind everything. Like, for instance, um, sin was brought into the world because Adam and Eve ate from a tree, a fruit from a tree. But Jesus, had a not kind of um was a cure for that as he was the fruit that was hanging on the tree. Look at that. And so um of course um Adam brought death, Christ brought life. And so God prepared everything up in vain and he made everything connect um even in the sense of um, the 40, the number 40 with Moses um, and the Israelites, and then Jesus, 40 days without food out in the wilderness. It's just, I don't know, it's interesting. So let's try to correlate every time so I can remember what I'm learning. No, I think that's a, a good point. Like Jesus, he, there's like a whole period from, I think, so, yeah, from the last time we hear from Jesus in like Matthew, I believe, from 12 until he's like 30, there's like a whole 18 year gap where Jesus was just, it was preparation. Like the, it, there is, there was just that gap. Like we don't know what happened in that gap, but Jesus came back and he had all these different skills and he had all these different things to where from the point from 12 to 30, he was prepared to carry out what he needed to carry out in three years before he got crucified and whatnot. And so you even think about Jesus's life, like just 18 years of preparation, nothing like nothing else but preparation. And that takes a different level of patience because Jesus already knew his like purpose. He already knew his destiny, but he still had to like be prepared and cultivate what he had to cultivate to do it. And I think about that. I think about how 
you know, preparation is so important because we have to be prepared to receive what God has, because if we're not, then we're going to miss it or we could get it and we could, you know, misuse it and whatnot. But also think about the other side of patience where some of us can impede God's progress because we're trying to do too much in the preparation stage. And so can someone read um, Psalms 4610? I think this is also, you know, there are, there are many, many examples uh, of this, but um, I think it's why it's important to, to have an idea of, of an end goal um, because uh, without that, it's easy to uh, lose steam quickly. For instance, um, we talk about off season or even uh, preseason or in season. For those who know what the duration of the season is like, they know, okay, I don't have to make, I, I don't have to kill myself in these first three games because there's a whole season ahead of me and I need to be ready by the playoffs. I need to be healthy by this date. Or if I'm in a race, I'm not breaking out of the gates and using every ounce of my energy because this is a marathon. And if I do that, I have nothing left for the rest of the race. And so this whole idea of patience, you know, with the Olympics coming on, I always love certain races around the track because whoever sometimes many times whoever jumps out in the in the lead in the beginning does not maintain that lead and and there's always this one person that these announcers are like honing in on who's probably like the favorite oh you know so and so is he, they're in fifth right now they're just biding their time they're just being patient and then all of a sudden they make they they see the window they see clearly where 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 it's time to to put it into gear and they make their move. And then all of a sudden, where everybody else is tired, here comes that per. I'm sorry, I'm getting carried away. But then passing everybody and, and, and uh, reaches their goal, meets expectations. So I'm, I'm getting a whole lot of images that I'm trying to uh, dump on this Zoom call. But yeah, that's what I think about. No, I think that's an excellent point. I think about, uh, you gave the example of running. Like I even think about how Usain Bolt, this man trains for four years just to run nine, 10 seconds. Four years, like four years of preparation just to dust everybody in nine to 10 seconds every single time. And that's just rehearsing the same thing just over and over and over and doing all the physical training and doing all these things, eating right, all these things for four years just for, one race that in the Olympics, that's the type of preparation that like is required, but that's the type of preparation that's required because if he has a little slippage, then someone else can get him in a 10th of a second. Just it's, it's all that that makes the difference. Like that little bit of preparation that makes the difference in whether you win, the win or lose. And so <clears throat> I think about that and uh, that was a very good um, example IT. Um, did someone grab Psalm 4610 uh, for me, please? I got it. Thank you, Ms. Catherine. Go ahead. Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. Thank you. And so, um, just thinking about this verse, I just throw out a question. When is the last time you stood still? Because <laughs> Claire's shaking her head, right? Like, because everybody's schedule is busy, right? And I, and I cut like, um, that that's kind of like what I was expecting because a lot of the times like we're, we, we live in the world where we're taught to be busy. We're taught to be on the go, on the move so much. And we fill our schedules up so much that we don't have time for God anywhere. Like, we feel ourselves like we fill our schedules up with the pattern of the world, which is busyness and all these things. And then, you know, we, we slip God in for, you know, the last five minutes for prayer at the end of the night. And so I think about that and I think about how important it is to sometimes just be still and have that um, that sense of presence uh, rather than just always being on the move on the move rather. And so uh, 
thinking about that, um, what thoughts do we have? I think another question would all, um, all be good is how many of us are afraid of being still and quiet by ourselves? Or how many of us think it's very unpleasant to do so? Because that's hard for me. Hmm. No, I appreciate the honesty. I think that's a really authentic answer. Um, that that, but it's a it's a concept that really is not. We don't really broach like because I think I think there's like a sense of like in our heads like if we're not doing something then we're being lazy or like we're not being productive. But Jesus also took times away to rest. He also took times away to fast. Like he took times away just to you know be in the presence of. God without anyone else around him like he wasn't always around the disciples and always doing miracles and stuff and so I think about that and I think about how just like you know we talk about New York City like the, the city that never sleeps like May was saying he's from Brooklyn so I'm sure he can attest but um you know like the city that never sleeps that's what NYC is called but we all need rest so it's you think about like how counter um how counterintuitive that is to what the Bible teaches and whatnot and um it's just something interesting to think about as like we go on this walk of patience and whatnot, because some of us can impede God's progress by getting in the way too much or doing too much. Like some of us, we're just doing too much that God's like, well, where's the room for me to do what I have to do so I can, you know, produce and whatnot. You know, if you don't leave God any room, then how can you expect, you know, anything out of to come out of his hands for you if you've done everything? You know, that's what God's, that's what God's job is. You know, so um, I think about that and uh, it's just something interesting to think about. Um, that is good. I, I like what you're bringing up, Aronde. I believe that being still before God is not the same as doing nothing. There, there is an active, concentrated effort to sort of sit down and shut up. It, it doesn't mean you're, you're taking a nap or you're, you're relaxing or you're doing your own thing but to wait on the Lord to, this isn't a great analogy, but I've seen this done with uh, hunting dogs where like when I go bird hunting, there, there's certain dogs that will freeze and they will stare at their owner. They will stare at their master. And if mm -hmm. anyone witnesses this, it is obvious that dog is not relaxed he is anticipating and he is waiting for the slightest indication of the master telling him, go do this or do that. And as soon as he gets the signal, the word, the whatever, he is off in a flash. Mm. But that, that's, but that's a, that, but that's a type of deadly patience that you, you, you can't, you can't, that takes practice, you know, that takes, you know, a different, you know, that takes, you know, that, that consistency to, you know, know when to strike, know when to pull back, know when to be still, know when to be productive. And on that's like, why, you it's know, wisdom. Yeah, it's wisdom. Right. Exactly. And that's why we have to be able to, that's why we have to fill our, um, not fill our, but um, make time in our schedules intentionally for God. So he can speak to us when we need to be moving and when we need to like be still and let him, you know, do the heavy lifting and whatnot. Cause I think that's a, another thing is that um, we like have these repeated cycles of days and days and, you know, things just kind of move and move and like God kind of like falls into the back seat and we kind of like forget them. Like, you know, like we're like a little kid, you like to leave a toy in the car or whatnot. It's kind of like that. And then you go back and it's like, Oh, I remember where I left it. And you pick it back up and whatnot. And, um, you know, God wants us, like, God wants us to put him first, not, you know, on the back burner when, you know, we need a 911 call, essentially, or when it's convenient to pick him up. And so um, I also think right. that's a very good point, Mr. Anthony, but I appreciate it. Appreciate um, so it. Nicole it's, just said that it's important to have your focus in the right place. Is she reading my lesson? <laughs> she just wise like that, bro. <laughs> See, I was going to my next point, uh, which the second part of our process is concentration. So where is your focus slash aim at? Um, and 
I'll give IT some credit for this. I mean, I had already made this point, but um, I'll reference his lesson when he was talking uh, a couple weeks ago, I believe about where are like our target and whatnot and aiming at the right things. I don't necessarily remember the phrase that you said, uh, or like the, I don't remember the phrase that you said, but you were talking about aiming at everything and aiming at nothing and all that. And um, it made me think of that question and how we're supposed to be concentrated, right? Like there's supposed to be a level of focus on the right things um, while we're being patient. And so uh, thinking about that, I want to turn to Philippians 4.8. While we're flipping to that, mm -hmm. I just want to get back to one of the points you were making about Jesus when he separated himself from the disciples. That was, that was purposeful mm -hmm. because he was plugging into the source. See, he was plugging into the power, his dad, right? Our father. And he did that all the time. And the Bible doesn't record every single time he did it, but he did it often. And, and, and I, was, I was also thinking about our young Mr. Ryan, because he's, he's going through something on top of something. And see, that could be God building your patience. And it takes time, like Arande said. My son said, it's a process. It's a process. So look at it as a process. And it's there, for, it's there to teach you something. I appreciate that, Mr. Liz. Manny, Liz is my wife. Is her name is on. <laughs> Straight up. Oh, sorry about that. I just told you. <laughs> no, no. I, I like Mr. Liz. That's, that's... <laughs> I'm, I'm glad you're doing that. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, what's your, what's your name, by the way? Manny. Manny, all right. Thanks, Mr. Manny. You're welcome. Yes. Oh. It's my wife's tablet, so. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that was a very interesting comment. But um, yes, that, that is also a good comment as well, that um, we should fix our eyes on the right things, and we should also recognize that patience is a process. And so uh, thinking about the verse and thinking about concentration as our next um, pit stop in the process. Uh, Philippians 4 8 says, Finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. Mm -hmm. And so I think about like sometimes, I, and IT mentioned this, uh, it's, some, it's not like what we're doing while we wait, but also how we wait. And that comes to our attitude. You know, sometimes you could be waiting on something, but you could be like, oh my gosh. You know, you could be sitting up there having an attitude and complaining. And God, God's also trying to build your attitude while you're being patient. He's not just trying to, you know, build your craft or build whatever it is he's trying to build in you. Like, it's also about your attitude as well. And I think that's something that we need to be fixated on is where our thoughts are, where um where our focus is directed because i think a lot of times like even the bible it talks about being sober-minded i think about how a lot of times like we allow the world to intoxicate our thoughts with other things that are not you know scripture like that aren't lovely that aren't pure that aren't noble like this verse describes and it kind of takes our focus away and then we start getting that attitude where we start losing the sight of patience and losing you know what we're supposed to be doing while we're being patient and so um just thought so far about that verse and uh, anything else that we've talked about so far. If you go up a couple of verses to verse, I believe, six, Philippians six, and the word says, be anxious for nothing, but in everything, by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving let your requests be known be made known to god and the peace of god which transcends all understanding will guard your heart and mind through jesus Christ. no that that's that's an excellent point like i think especially like the anxious part, a lot of things where 
anxious about we kind of just internalize it but we don't get like we don't give it to god we kind of just internalize it and try to do damage control with it or just try to um live with it essentially and we'll we'll figure it out with while we're in the midst of patience and god's trying to but god in that verse uh, that you just outlined man he's trying to give us peace that guards our hearts and our minds and how can you concentrate in the season of patience when your heart and your mind don't have any peace they don't they're intoxicated by the thoughts of the world. They're on the, all the, they're worried about all these anxious things. It's kind of hard to be peaceful while you're anxious. Those things are contradictory. So uh, I think that's an excellent point. Yeah, that's a good point. I'm gonna take this opportunity to throw my mom under the bus. Uh, she's not here to defend herself. And, and I think this is, a great example, but it's very ironic uh, because there was a situation that my mom was praying about, and I think it has something to do with uh, finances or whatever, trying to get something squared away. And she talks to the lady at the desk. She's like, I was, I've, been, I've been so worried about this, and I keep praying about it. And the lady was like, if you was praying about it, then why were you worried? Which mm. is, is very rare for mom <laughs> to be on the receiving end of a, of a sermon like that. But that's a, a great point, this idea of not being anxious. Now that me, I'm, I get anxious about a lot of stuff a lot of times. And so this verse is one that when I read it, I'm just like, okay, yeah, but, but how though? How do, how, do I, how do I not get worked up about this? But the Bible's making it clear to truly have the peace of God, let that guard your heart and your mind. Yeah, I, I think you bring up a good point, Mr. Anthony. Oh, go ahead, Manny. I just wanted to add, well, well Anthony was speaking about mm -hmm. the anxieties. You got to be very, very careful because I believe it's Proverbs 12 and 25. It's anxiety in the heart of man causes depression. But a good word makes you glad. Yeah. Worry weighs down a person and encouraging word cheers a person up. Yeah, that's a excellent point. And I was even going to add on to what Mr. Anthony was saying, because I think the thing about patience is that like patience is like a thing where it teaches us to be present, because I think a lot of I think a lot of us um, struggle with like trying to get to the future, like, but like a future that we don't know. And I think the thing with patience is that like patience teaches us to handle the present so God can handle the future. Like God will handle our future if we handle what he's given us in our hands right now. And I think um, a lot of times like we're, we concentrate and we rehearse what we don't have. And if you cons consistently concentrate and rehearse what you don't have, all you get is nothing. Like if that's all you're ever focused on, like we're always focused on the car we don't have, the the, the shoes we don't have, the money we don't have, you know, the spouse we don't have. We're always focused on what we don't have. But if we were cultivating what we do have, then you could have that God will prepare those other things for you. But a lot of times we're not preparing for those things and we're not concentrated on the right things that we're supposed to be doing while God, um, while God has us in the season of patience. And so all we're reproducing is nothing because all we're focused on is nothing because we don't have it. And I think that's a consistent cycle that we, repeat and it's hard because we're always focused on the future rather than the present and um you know god will always take care of our future if we're you know focused on our present and taking care of what he's given us in our hands and so um that was uh, something i was thinking about uh with what mr anthony was talking about um as well did anyone else have any thoughts about um we're on the second part of the process we're talking about concentration. Um, did anyone else have any thoughts about concentration? I just liken it to the word awareness. So when you're going through something and you're in something, just be aware. There's a reason for it. Yeah, I, I like that. Um, there's always a God always has a purpose and whatnot. And if we're tuned in to what he's, um, what situation he has us in, then we can understand the purpose and be better equipped to 
cultivate that patience. So that's definitely a good point. Um, so we're gonna move on to the last part of the process, which um, is dedication. So to me, dedication is, are you going to do it even when you don't want to? Like, this is the part of patience that the, the, the last step is like a hard one because it's like those days where you don't feel like getting out of bed, those days that you don't want to, you know, when your mind's just not in the best space or, you know, you're not feeling as well. Those are the days where your faith is really tested and whatnot. And so um, can someone grab Proverbs 3, 5 through 6? And um, I will grab Proverbs 22, 6. Um so whoever gets Proverbs 3, 5, 3, 6, just put your thumb on it and I'll ask you to read it. <clears throat> Excuse me. Okay, mom, you have it? Yeah. Okay, okay, thank you. <laughs> she you, 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 you put your thumb on his forehead. <laughs> you put your thumb on it. <laughs> she wanted to make it known. It was hers. But okay, thank you, mom. So um, Proverbs 22, 6, it says... Star children off on the way they should go, and even when they are old, they were not they will not turn from it. And I like this verse for dedication because like instilling in your it, it's just that 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 routine, that habit, that um just that maturity to instill it in your kid early and they'll never stray from it. Like they'll have the dedication to it no matter what. Like they'll do it even when they don't want to, they'll rely on God, even you know when they're struggling and whatnot. So I like this verse for dedication because it just kind of, I don't know, that one kind of spoke to me when I was thinking about like the dedication of being patient and whatnot and seeing that fruit over time. Like it says when they're young as children and then even when they're old. And so um, uh, before I let my mom read the verse, anyone have any thoughts about uh, dedication, doing it when we don't want to um, for the verse even? You say dedication, and I think of way of life. It's just a, a slight difference, but to me, it means a lot. I mean, it is dedication, but you said uh, you do it even when you don't want to because I can't remember the exact phraseology that you used, but I think of it as a way of life. You're teaching your children how life should be. Mm -hmm. So it's the way that they should be. That means even when you don't want to, this is the way that you should be. Even when it's hard, life is hard. Mm -hmm. No, I like, I like that, Ms. Caswell. Yeah, it is a way of life because, yeah, that requires commitment. That requires, like a way of life requires commitment, requires dedication, like sacrifice all those different things. And so, um, yeah, I appreciate that. That was that, yeah, that kind of like brings it even more into a clear focus, that way of life that, of how we should be living or whatnot. Um, did anyone else have any thoughts? Okay, mom, you can go ahead and read uh, Proverbs 3, 5 through 6. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all ways, in all your ways, submit to him and he will make your paths straight. Now, I don't know about anyone else, but this scripture always comes up and it's very easy to read, but it's very hard to live. <laughs> like this, <laughs> like this is one of those verses, like it really does. Like it rolls off the tongue nice when you say it to someone, but then you actually think about applying it and it's like, dang, there's, there's just a different level of discipline that comes with trusting the Lord with all your heart and not just like, oh, a fraction of your heart, but you have to trust him with all your heart and lean out on your own understanding. So do you always see in the world, um, you know, just all these different things that you could be influenced by and whatnot that could, you know, disrupt your faith or move it off course. And then after that, you have to submit to like, that's just like giving up control. And most of us like to be in control. But when you get to the end of the verse, it talks about making your path straight. 
and I think about how like that takes a different level of commitment of dedication like Miss Cashman said that's a way of life um that to where you can give all these things to God and you can trust God so much that you're not worried about um all these different things that are gonna come up and you know that you're going to encounter and so I just think about that and um it's just like a verse that really it like sticks out because it's so short but it's even harder to live yeah, I agree. And I think within this patience, it requires patience. I think sometimes we want to be at that level where we trust God with everything that we have, but that requires patience. And within that patience, it's experiences and opportunities where um, we are tasked to, to, to have patience. And as we grow and we assemble, but as we grow and grow, um, we're getting more and more um, patient more and more trusting God and I think it's I think it's also trusting God in different circumstances because we might say okay I trust in God and I'm good at trusting God in this area financially but I'm not good at trusting him um, vocationally you know um, so I appreciate God's patience in that um, providing us opportunities to get to better love. Whenever yeah, I, I hear think. that, oh, sorry. Ahead, Whenever I hear that passage, I think of Proverbs 14, 12. There is a way that seems right to a man, but in the end, it leads to death. And so whenever I hear that other passage, I think of this one. Uh, hmm. Yeah. Yep, that's yeah, that that's a that's a that's a verse that could scare you out your shoes right there because um yeah, it's like you could be think that you're doing the right thing. You could be thinking that you're going the right way, you could be thinking that you're doing the things that God calls you to do, and you could be heading the exact like the the completely wrong way. You could be heading towards the way that ends in death. And like we're in Proverbs and it's the book of wisdom. And I think it kind of goes back to Mr. Anthony's point about you have to have wisdom um, with patience. Like you can't just be, you know, be, be being patient on whatever. And God already told you no, like five times. And you're still like, I'm just waiting on God. Maybe the sixth time, you know, if I'm patient enough, he'll tell me yes. Like, no, God said no, <laughs> you know, type thing. And so, um, yeah, I think that's another key part of that, um, which uh, yeah, I wanted to give Mr. Anthony credit for it. There's also like wisdom and being patient as well. And uh, so thank you, Ms. Kasman, for uh, bringing in that verse as well. Did anybody else have any comments? I was just thinking trust in God is just so key. It's so key to our, to our Christian walk. Um, but it's also key to to um, you know, living in this world, um, we have to um, you know we have to learn to 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 keep our focus on God, even when those times in those times where things are just really really hard, and we just want to to do things our own way. Um, because we're impatient, <laughs> um, you know, we have to we have to go back to uh, to God's word and trust Him and rely on on Him to get us through whatever the situation is that uh, that, that we're going through. Um, and if we can if we can do that, then you'll find that God's word is true as 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 this scripture says. God will make our path straight. God will remove any obstacles that's blocking um, um, our way from, from getting to where, wherever it is that we're trying to be. But also keep in mind, it has to be God's will as well. So, Yeah, I think a lot of times we, because like we don't trust God, we end up taking the long road. 
Like mm -hmm. we, you know, what, what the world is grinding and hustling for, God can have us, you know, walk into if we, if we trusted it with all our heart, if we lean not on our own understanding, if we just submitted to him, what people are, you know, staying up all night, you know, just worrying and being anxious about like Manny said and whatnot and having this unsettled spirit and whatnot, we could walk right into a peace and patience and all these different fruits and it'd be so much easier. But I think because like we have that spirit of impatience and we want it now, 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 it, it makes it that much more difficult. And like um, the verse we started out with in second Peter, you know, God's delaying not for um, his sake, but because he doesn't want us to be destroyed. So I think even that, like God's gift at the wrong time can be your demise, not your, not your destiny, you know, type thing. And so there, there is that element of timing and God's plan that uh, is necessary. And so I, um, yeah, I think that was a good um, point that you brought up mom as well. <clears throat> Go ahead, um, you started speaking about God and how he took time to make create the world and I think about perfection so when he made this world it was perfect we're the ones that's messing it up so while you're sitting there and you're waiting for God just remember his plan is always perfect for you but that patience has to be put into practice every day <laughs> as you wait. Yeah. Oh, go ahead. Oh, sorry. Um, I always thinking of it as, um, like, you know, us as humans, like, you know, obviously compared to God, we're like feeble-minded creatures. And, um, like, we can only see, like, you know, the small picture, you know, what's in front of us. Like, while God has, like, the whole, like, you know, canvas out, and he's, like, we see this hill that we're just, like, oh, like, this just keeps happening, or this keeps coming, there's always, like, you know, this obstacle, um, and, like, you know, sometimes you just want to, like, give up, we're, like, okay, this isn't the right, this isn't obviously the right path, um, and, you know, going back to, like, you know, seeing it with our own eyes, you know, um, um, what did the verse say? Um, there's a um, there's a way that seems right to man. So like you know we may see like okay well obviously this isn't right, but if we don't put all that focus in like you know asking God like hey like show me this like before we're you know uprooting everything ourselves, um, but asking him like hey is this is this where you want me to be and waiting for like for that answer like we can like you know, miss out on a lot of stuff. And um, like specifically with what, like what I've been going through, you know, like suffering sometimes is a part of like, you know, the growth process and like, you know, going through things. And um, like, you know, I think of Job and I'm like, I mean, <laughs> got nothing on Job. Um, no. And then even like, even with Jesus, like, you know, he, he suffered and he like he asked God but like you know like let this pass for me but you know if it's your will like you know like I'm here and like this is I like I'm here to do your will and um I think that's uh like something I'm, I have to try to like remember um that just because like what am I trying to say like trusting in God doesn't mean there won't be turmoil or there won't be a storm or there won't be struggle mm -hmm. but you know persevering through that and you know just putting all your faith in him and like you know riding it out like you know allowing him to be the captain and you know sailing with him makes everything so much easier rather than trying to like do everything on your own or whatever no i mean <laughs> that's the and it at least this is just my opinion. This isn't from the Bible. Um, but I think like independence is like one of like the greatest illusions that we can have because we're always supposed to be dependent upon God. Like we're not supposed to be trying to do it out here ourselves or trying to make our own way and make our own path because that's a path like we talked about, like the verse that Ms. Kasman said, that's a path that can seem right, but leads to destruction. 
you know, we, we have to rely on God. That's why, you know, the verse talks about submitting to him and trusting him. That's something that surpasses our, you know, understanding. That's something that surpasses our, you know, independence and doing things the way we want to do them. And so <clears throat> I think that's um, something that's also kind of interesting just to think about. But um, no, I appreciate your uh, comments, Ryan. They were definitely insightful as well. Um, did anyone else have any other comments? I was just going to say it brought me to when Ryan um, made a comment. I was thinking of... Um, James 1, 2, consider it pure joy, my brothers and sisters, when you face trials of many kinds, because you know that the testing of your faith produces perseverance. Let perseverance finish its work so that you may be mature and complete, not lacking anything. Uh, Mom, you still in my, you still in my first verse for, my, for, for part two of my lesson next week. You, you jump in the gun. <laughs> jump in the gun. All right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but, but yeah that but that's also a good point um that also is insightful and um tune in next week <laughs> yeah tune in next week because yeah we talked about the process of patience tonight um we talked about preparation concentration and dedication and next week we're talking about the wisdom of patience and so um yeah if there's no other final comments uh that kind of concludes things, but um, just one last time, if anyone else had any closing thoughts or anything. Just for Ryan, <laughs> just for Ryan, really, because he, he hit it on the head when, because even Jesus said in this world, you will have trouble. Not maybe, but you will. But take heart, I have overcome the world. And to that, point, um, I'm reminded of Galatians 22, or Galatians 5, rather, 22 and 20 um, and 23, the fruit of the Spirit. And anybody who has Holy Spirit living in them has patience, has gentleness, has love, has kindness. And <clears throat> I think a lot of times um, we forget that and we think we have to we equate it to like wisdom where God says, you know, if you want wisdom, ask me and I'll give it to you. Uh, but if you have the spirit, you have that in you. And he says he will produce it even more in our lives. Um, the more we walk with him. So for me, just that, like you were talking about earlier, the mental preparation and shift, um, a part of that for me is recognizing that it's already a part of the gift that he has blessed all of us with that bear his name. And so when I'm <clears throat> thinking I don't have self-control, I don't have patience, I don't have love, I'm reminded no, but I do if I have him. Excellent point. I guess Ms. Nicole is gonna drop the mic. Oh, no, I know IT was going to say something. Uh, I saw that you were going to say something, IT. Did you uh, want to say what you were going to say? No, I think I'm good. <laughs> Humble guy. <laughs> but, yeah, so next week we're talking about the wisdom of patience. Uh, hopefully you all will be back for part two of that. And um, hopefully anything from this lesson touched you and I encourage you, and I hope that we can continue walking these things out in our life uh, as we recognize it is a process. So, um, yeah, that's about it. Uh, IT, did you have any announcements or anything? Uh, no announcements uh, to speak of. Well, actually, maybe I do. Um, but what did you say? Next week is going to be uh, the wisdom of patience, you said? Okay. Um, there is a retreat in September if you're interested in St. Pete. So um, I think I already sent emails out to uh, people who had mentioned they were interested, but uh, just continue to announce it in case uh, uh, someone, it's, if you want dates or information, I can get you that. So just be aware of that. Um, and uh, Sunday mornings on Facebook and Zoom. Uh, Anthony does a Bible study live. He leads that. 
So if you have questions that you want to uh, bring forth, maybe you've been reading something and you want a little more clarity, we use a word to, uh, uh, to dig into that. So um, check it out Sundays at 9. Nine. Nine, Nine Eastern. Yes. Yes. And Ryan, where did you say you were? I'm in uh, St. Kitts, Caribbean Islands right now. Oh, gotcha. Okay. Yeah. yeah, I'll be over here for another year. Oh, wow. Well, okay. Ooh. Be patient, my brother. <laughs> I appreciate it. And I really appreciate the lesson, man. And, like, and everyone's comments, it, it's really been uh, encouraging. Well, then um, I'll go ahead and close us out in prayer and then we'll be good to go and looking forward to next week. Um, let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for this day. Thank you for this evening um, where we can gather together on Zoom and, and uh, be uh, exposed to the preparation that Arande uh, had in, in uh, bringing this lesson to the forefront. Um, we pray that uh, we would be patient in, in how we wait for you, Lord. Uh, in the very first verse that we, we went to, we, we, we saw and continue to see how you are patient uh, with us. Lord, help us to be patient with others. Um, help us to love uh, through this, the, the, the course of this um, lesson. It's been made more obvious that that there is, that patience encompasses a lot more uh, and, and we need to learn to trust. We need to learn to uh, love. We need to learn to be disciplined and dedicated to what you've called us to be and what you've called us to do. So Lord, help us to, to do all those things, Lord, and to uh, lean on each other to um, uh, help us be accountable, Lord. Um, we lift up all those who are, are sick, who are... Um, Mourning a loss of loved ones, Lord, uh, mindful of Donnie and uh, mindful of Aurelio, who is recovering from uh, COVID. Um, and we lift up uh, uh, many other brothers and sisters, Lord, who um, are on our hearts and our minds, Lord. We pray all this in Christ's name. Amen. All right. So that is it. That's, that's it. Just a correction, IT. Um, Aurelio, I wouldn't say that he is recovering. He's still in the clutches of. In the clutches of? Yes, okay. but it's not, it's not, I want to say not serious. He has a lot of symptoms that he continues to have. As of yesterday, I'll update you as it's, but so keep I know he said going. he was um, still having his, his fever. I, I was right. texting this and morning. fatigue. Okay, yeah. good. Okay, so you have more uh, recent information than I do. Thank you so much. <laughs> probably not as probably not as thorough as you do, Miss Casma. Um, so it was it was a brief. It was brief. Okay. So. But thanks in a way for praying for my son. You're welcome. Thank you for sharing, everyone. All right, y'all. Have a great week. Good night. Thank you. That was a great lesson, Aranda. Thanks. Good job. Bye -bye. Yeah.